So today what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make a spool for a cross cart. Um, this one's designed uh, for Kyle Ray's Racing's uh, V variable frame one cart and we're going to show you how to do that make this spool for about $70 and uh, all the parts we're going to show you where to get them and how to put it together and it's very simple and it'll allow you to, to have a chain tightener on it so once we drop it in the cart we'll tighten the chain and our Miata axles will bolt up to it and the point of using the Miata app axles is we can get a set of those for about 110 bucks so we get $70 into a spool we get 110 into a pair of Miata axles and that's that's pushing one one uh, hundred eighty dollars to get that set up and then we just need to put hubs so we can put a whole rear end with hubs into a cross cart for under three hundred dollars we don't need to have a solid rear axle brand new. Uh, and all of our parts are brand new so that's what today's video is going to show okay so we're going to start out start out with two flange bearings yeah in this case we're using an inch and a quarter uh, for no special reason it just seemed like it was more robust than anything so we take our flange bearing and we measured between them and we got four and a half inches so we're going to take a piece of paper we're going to trace out this flange bearing on it we're going to get the holes and now that we've got that We've set our compass to five inch, five and a half inches. Uh, was here was four and a half. We're going to go to five and a half from the center of this hole. We're going to draw a line, and then we can shrink it up. We don't need to, but we can shrink it up a little bit, and we can draw a second line, and we can go a little farther and draw a third line if we want, and that's where our cutout's going to be. So that's how we go about and we make a template and there's our template that we made uh, for that so these this part we're going to make two of them we've already done that we've made those two parts right here and that's going to allow us to put these on the flange bearings and then it's going to allow us to be able to adjust the spool to tighten the chain and that's going to happen here now this setup uh, is set up for the for the Kyle ray um cart and the the variable frame so it, it fits into the spool on there so what we did for that frame is where the spool is supposed to mount it's four and a half inches wide so we went ahead and we made spacers on there to keep the outside of the dimensions of the spool at four and a half inches wide um, this four spacer is actually a quarter inch longer than the other three because these are sitting on eighth inch plates so it's gonna go together like that and we're gonna we're just gonna slide that together real fast right now now one of the things that I'm that we do or we're trying to do is we're trying to um, keep our grease zerks in the same spot so they're lined up so we can get them onto the rear so we're just trying to pay attention to that so I'm going to just slide these parts together up our grease zerks and put that together and then we'll put on our, our nuts and you can see that we have a spool coming together right now with this The fourth and final bolt can't go in right now because that's what's going to be mounted on the frame of the cross cart. So that the spacer will drop in and we'll put the fourth and final bolt later. 
So that brings us to the shaft. So this is the shaft that we're using and we cut a seven inch piece of shaft and we took it to the machine shop and we had a keyway put in an inch and a quarter long on that. We made two um, plates that we had laser cut and we have one to fit up with the Miata axle and then the second one we set up the second one we made a little bit wider so that we can bolt our our sprocket right to it so we have the Miata axle template right here and then we have the template for our sprocket so the way this is going together and then we just purchased well done hubs that you can basically get anywhere we got these from motion industry they were about five dollars i just ran down the street picked them up and then we welded them on so this is going to go together um got to make sure your bearings are lined up and the second one will go on like that and we'll put the key on and get it keyed up and then we have a center spool uh, ready to go and that's going to bolt up to the Miata axle so I'm just going to pop this off for a second and show you the Miata axle so we have the Miata axles that we purchased and we did go ahead and we did paint up these uh, portions of it just to so they don't rust so bad because they're going to be really exposed on our cart. Um, the back of the Miata axle has a little bit of a recess on it. So when you bolt that up to the hub, there's going to be a little bit of a gap for the grease cap. So you can put a couple washers back there and to keep that spaced out so you don't put pressure on the grease cap. Um, we have a 3D printer so we just went ahead and printed up a spacer that will pop on there. and. Um, We'll put, the, we'll put the file for the spacer uh, in the link below, or there'll be a link to the file. We'll also put the, uh, we had these laser cut, the two, the two hub portions. We had these laser cut out, and we'll have those files also available for you if you want to use the same files. Um, we had them laser cut. They were about $14, $15 a piece to have them done and so that was real cheap we had them done local you can get them done online there's numerous places just search for you know job shop laser cutting and there'll be a few more dollars to to have them done online maybe 20 bucks a piece but you can get them you you can get a spool set up relatively cheap so in our case it was about 15 dollars each for spool for bearing so that's 30 bucks another 30 bucks for the two laser cut plates so that's 60 bucks ten dollars for the two for the two um weld on hub things so that's seventy dollars for a spool i'm not counting the the bushing material and that because that was just stuff that we had laying around and most people building a cross cart should have that type of stuff uh laying around the last thing that i do want to mention here is with this axle these are um, self-centering bearings that have locking collars that go in there. So as we're assembling this, we need to put the locking collars in. And what the locking collars do is they're non-concentric. So you can see that they're thinner here and fatter there. And they fit on the bearing. And then once you put it together, you spin it till it locks the hub on and then you right in here you'll hit it with a chisel right on there to tighten it and then if to take it off you hit it the other way so we'll have two of these on there to lock the shaft onto the bearings so just drop that in gets a little tight in here I know you can't see very well but that's how they're gonna go on and they're gonna lock we're gonna mount this up after we install it into the cart so just with this one on it's too big it's going to be too hard to uh, get it in the cart
So we're over at the frame of the, the KJ Racing uh, Variable Frame 1 and we've added these brackets in here for the spool to sit on and it uh, looks a little bit different up here because we're, we're actually using a snowmobile engine in it so the engine's going to sit above the spool but um, the spool will mount on those brackets so we have our spool we don't have the shaft in it right now so we bring the spool in and uh, drop it back and we'll set the we'll set the spool in place um, get it down in there get it lined up work the bolt through and then we have to we have to place in the spacer in the bottom the one the four spacer so we'll get that put into place and uh, Try and get that in. A little tough reaching in there. I'll just leave it out for the demonstration purposes. But we'll get the we'll get the bolt through. Get it in the place. Should be good. If we take a look up here, we've got our chain tightener. So we have a second um, spacer that drops in up there and move that ahead. And then we drop in our tightening bolt, tighten on that. So we're set up with this spool in the cart. And we have now we have the ability to tighten the chain. So we can take our shaft, drop it back in, line up the bearings a little bit, move the installation. And we have our second spool, needs the keyway put in, but we're just going to drop this in. And that's lined up. And I'm going to pull that back off real quick. And what we did for a chain tightener is we have these bolts. So when we pull the chain back tight, we can drive it back with these bolts. And we just use a piece of two inch angle iron there and welded some nuts on the top side and one on each side. We boxed it in just so mud and stuff wouldn't get up there, but that's our chain tightener on there. So very inexpensive chain tightener, allows us to run a center spool and this is our spool set up right here. Our, our $70 spool. And let me grab the sprocket. In this case, our sprocket's going to mount on the inside, but you can see where the sprocket sits. And when we calculated the height of this triangle, we calculated it to keep the sprocket protected by the bottom of the frame. So that's our setup. If, uh, if you guys like the video, make sure you say something in the comments below. Uh, we can also put together how we did the foot pedals and the brakes for 50 bucks. Also, how uh, we did the rear hubs and uh, using Polaris, Razor. Polaris uh, sp um, spindles and uh, Mazda Miata uh, hubs to form the rear axle. And again, that was only a few dollars a piece to finish out the, the whole rear axle. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it.